Hi there, and welcome to DevNet Create. My name is David Stout. Uh, I'm a developer advocate for Cisco's DevNet program. Um, and I've been uh, supporting and advocating uh, for Cisco uh, API developers uh, for over 20 years uh, in our collaboration space, so both on-premise uh, and in the cloud. Uh, and I've seen APIs come and go. Uh, mostly they come and stay. Um, and uh, have seen the good, the bad, the ugly, uh, and hope to share some of the best practices and learnings uh, that we've uh, gathered together and uh, are starting to apply Cisco-wide, uh, and to encourage you guys to make great APIs as well. So why should you design APIs? Vendors like Microsoft, uh, Cisco, Google, uh, have lots of APIs, APIs for everything, uh, for cloud services, for application software packages, for hardware devices, uh, APIs you know, raining down from heaven uh, upon the grateful developers below, uh, and that's fine. Um, they spend a lot of money uh, bringing people like me uh, to help uh, support and advocate for those APIs, um, and uh, we're happy when developers use our APIs. Uh, but if you've worked on a software project of your own uh, that's even moderately complex, uh, whether it be something that's client-server, three-tier architecture, uh, or full-blown microservices solution, uh, those components need to exchange information. They need to send events, uh, grab data, um, and uh, APIs are a natural uh, extension of, of how to do that. It's pretty easy to throw together a, a quick and dirty API. Uh, you put a couple of HTTP GET requests uh, in the client, uh, you import uh, Express or Flask in the server side, uh, and you've got yourself a way to uh, exchange data between uh, two components of your software application. But if you do this you know, a handful of times or more, uh, or those APIs have uh, more than a handful of uh, different types of uh, requests uh, inside them, uh, things get complex, especially when you start thinking about documentation, uh, support, serviceability, uh, and how those APIs will be consumed by different uh, development teams within your organization. Uh, so if you just write the code, uh, or you just uh, even describe the code, your backend developers uh, take a shot at uh, building their side. Uh, the client developers uh, take a shot at building their side. Uh, you know, in order to understand how it works on either end, you have to read the source code. Um, the doc writers aren't available because uh, we don't have a software project let yet. Uh, it becomes uh, uh, difficult to manage, uh, especially if you need to iterate uh, and rapidly uh, change and uh, enhance uh, and expand that API um, going forward. The good news is that uh, there are uh, modern techniques uh, and tools, um, uh, including the one we'll be talking about today, uh, the Open API spec, uh, that help uh, application dev developers uh, build APIs quickly, uh, easily, with high quality, um, and to automate uh, a lot of the things that uh, are tedious about uh, an API or, or error prone. Uh, so that you can actually uh, design an API first, focus on the design, uh, then move on to the implementation of the back end, the front end, uh, you know, the consumer documentation, um, and uh, you know, create a, a mostly automated uh, flow uh, where the design of the API is key, uh, and consuming the API uh, is based on, you know, perfectly implemented uh, uh, stub code, client libraries, uh, and documentation that's always uh, completely accurate, uh, which, which is great for, for everyone that uh, needs to use that API. The key to API design first philosophy uh, is the API specification. Uh, so uh, in OpenAPI, this is a, a YAML or JSON formatted file uh, that formally describes the API. Uh, you know, the request types that are available, uh, the data schema, the inputs, the outputs, uh, that functions as a sort of contract uh, between the API provider on the, uh, the server side and the API consumer on the client side, uh, so that uh, both sides uh, know and agree uh, what the API does uh, in a fairly precise way. Once you have that specification, um, there are tools provided by the OpenAPI project uh, that can uh, auto-magically uh, create a bunch of the downstream uh, components, uh, for example, the, do the documentation, uh, the server-side and client-side uh, code stubs, uh, mock servers, etc., um, that are you know, quickly and easily produced. Uh, they align precisely uh, with, the with the OpenAPI spec uh, that you authored, 
um, and you can you know diff out changes so that the downstream consumers of those things know precisely and only what what was changed. The idea is that you can build these tools into your uh, automated uh, continuous in integration and delivery pipeline uh, so that your architects can make a change to the API uh, spec. Uh, and then the CI pipeline auto generates the server side code, uh, the client side uh, uh, libraries, the, the documentation. Um, and you can you know, auto generate a, a mock server that provides sample data uh, so that the uh, client developers can get started uh, before the back-end developers have, have even uh, begun or completed uh, their implementation of the actual API. So let's put on our coding hats for a few minutes uh, and try out some of these open API tools uh, in action. A bit of history, uh, the open API spec was originally um, a project called Swagger uh, and in about 2015 I think SmartBear open sourced that uh, to the Linux Foundation. Um, and uh, all the core tools are available and, and managed by uh, that community uh, there. Um, but uh, SmartBear Smart still has some additional services on top of those core tools that you can check out. Um, but they do host uh, demos and, and uh, the source code uh, for the, the open source stuff that we're interested in today. Uh, we're first going to check out uh, the editor. Uh, so this is a uh, open source project. Uh, you can download the, the editor uh, directly from GitHub. It's a, you know, a web server and application that provides the user interface. Uh, or you can just uh, try it out online uh, live. So what we're looking at here is uh, the editor in action. Uh, on the left, we have the, the open API spec, uh, the holy grail of our uh, talk today. Uh, in here is a complete technical description of uh, the API. Uh, so that uh, its path, uh, the authorization uh, and uh, security for it, uh, the actual APIs and their uh, REST paths, um, what kind of data uh, the uh, API uh, consumes, what it produces, uh, what the parameters are, uh, links to the uh, actual schema definitions of those inputs and outputs uh, can be put in here, uh, as well as the possible HTTP responses. Making changes in the editor on the left side uh, in real time will actually update uh, this generated documentation on the right. Uh, so if we make a change over here, um, it'll be reflected uh, real time. We can uh, authorize uh, and actually use this API interactively. If we uh, go into try it out mode, uh, you can click on ex uh, execute, um, you know, modify the data, uh, really test out the API right inside the documentation. As an alternative, uh, if you like Visual Studio Code, uh, and uh, I do for sure, uh, there is an open API Swagger editor um, by 42Crunch uh, that allows you to uh, create uh, and edit uh, open API specs uh, directly uh, in Visual Studio Code. Uh, so you can work on the source code, uh, you can view uh, a real time preview of the actual uh, API. Um, and, you know, for example, add, add methods to the request. Let's see, let's add a put a method in here. Uh, that'll uh, add it directly into the source code. You can see it reflected live in the preview, test it out, interact with it, uh, etc. So similar functionality to the, the online browser-based, uh, but using Visual Studio uh, on the actual source code itself. Once you have your open API spec defined, uh, you can start thinking about uh, publishing documentation uh, for your API consumers. For that, we're gonna look at the Swagger UI project. Again, uh, this is an open source project uh, that you can grab on GitHub. Once you have downloaded it, uh, it's as simple as looking uh, into this dist folder where all the files associated with the application are there. Uh, you can uh, edit the index.html and update the URL where your open API spec uh, can actually be found. Um, and then just simply host this um, disk folder. Um, by opening the HTML, uh, you can check it out. Uh, it will uh, obtain your open API spec, automatically generate the uh, documentation on the fly, uh, and it's all interactive uh, and easy to use for the developer. There are lots of other ways uh, to use uh, the, the code. Um, it's a, you can 
install it as an npm node.js module. Uh, you can ship it as a uh, browser, you know, webpack uh, uh, bundle. Uh, so it makes it really easy to uh, provide um, this great looking documentation uh, with very little effort. Again, once you have your API spec defined, uh, you can start thinking about generating code. Uh, so you can generate uh, source code for the, uh, the server side um, uh, or for client libraries. Let's take a look at that. Uh, we'll be using the Swagger CodeGen project, uh, which again is a GitHub project that you can download and clone uh, to generate uh, server side stubs um, for all these languages. Uh, fairly fleshed out client libraries uh, for all these native lab, uh, languages that you can see here. Um, but if you like, you can just use the uh, editor, relaunch that, uh, and up here at the top, you have options for generating the server or client side code. So if I pick uh, Python, it will generate the code uh, pretty much instantly. I can download it, uh, extract it, and take a look. So here we have that generated uh, source code project. It's, it's fairly fleshed out. Uh, there's, there's a nice readme uh, that's auto-generated that has uh, instructions for how to use the library, uh, including all of the uh, APIs that are in it uh, and definitions for all the document models uh, for all the objects. Uh, the actual source code of the client is, uh, is in this folder here. Uh, so we can rename that uh, and publish it, for example, uh, to the Python package index, uh, you know, so that anybody can uh, install it with pip. Um, uh, and that's it. So uh, anytime you make a change to the, uh, the specification, uh, the blueprint, uh, you can rerun uh, the code gen um, project uh, to update uh, instantly all of your client native libraries uh, along with the associated documentation. So you built uh, an open API spec API. Awesome. The question is, is it a good API? Uh, and that's the catch. Uh, and by that, I mean, is it uh, a good developer experience? Does it hang together logically? Uh, do the objects and relationships uh, and the names of uh, things and properties uh, make sense? Um, is the documentation uh, found in the same place? Uh, does scalability and security and authentication uh, work well. Uh, and ha have your San Jose and India and China teams uh, build APIs that are consistent across all of those properties uh, and best practices? Well, uh, we in DevNet took uh, a long look at uh, Cisco APIs and uh, went down the rabbit hole uh, to find out uh, and survey uh, all the, uh, many of the APIs, at least, uh, that we deal with uh, to find out, um, you know, are those good APIs and, and are they consistently good uh, across Cisco? Uh, the reality is, um, and uh, if you're a longtime Cisco developer, uh, you probably uh, uh, feel this in your core, is that um, a lot of the APIs were different, um, sometimes wildly different um, across developer experience, how they worked, authentication even, um, and if you're an app, a Cisco app developer who needed to use, uh, you know, more than one API, um, you know, and, and these APIs are uh, often complex for uh, large mission critical uh, systems and devices, uh, then, you know, having to invest that learning curve uh, each time you uh, uh, accessed a, a different API uh, was, uh, was unpleasant, let's put it that way. Uh, and, you know, slow down development velocity, uh, uh, velocity, uh, increased support, uh, and, and you know, all kinds of those things that, that we don't like. What we did find uh, was that REST uh, was, uh, if there was a common denominator, um, one of them. Uh, there were quite a few REST APIs, especially the new ones. Uh, they all looked quite a bit different, um, but uh, that, that seems to also be an industry standard uh, for a lot of especially uh, transactional APIs. Uh, so the, the first iteration uh, of our style guide uh, that we put together uh, focused on REST um, and, you know, pulled together the way things worked uh, across uh, as many APIs uh, as we could survey. Uh, we compared that uh, to, you know, the original uh, REST's, uh, you know, uh, description uh, and philosophy, uh, common and popular APIs across the industry, uh, and put together a set of recommendations. 
uh, best practices uh, in uh, an API style guide document. Uh, we put together a, a team that uh, you know maintains that document, uh, brings in different development uh, groups uh, and organizations to uh, review and, and contribute uh, to that document. Um, put together self assessments uh, so that an, uh, an API engineering team uh, can uh, check their API uh, and you know make sure it's uh, hitting all the uh, best practices marks. Uh, get a score and you know work towards improving that um, and uh, we've seen a lot of success with that uh, there are engineering teams that uh, are you know building new apis uh, where the api style guide is you know uh, they're kind of their bible uh, they design uh, based on that um, there are existing apis that are attempting to uh, move towards uh, the guidelines uh, in 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 that document um, and uh, you know in the long term uh, what we hope is uh, that we'll get uh, even more executive sponsorship uh, and uh, guidance to uh, make all of the Cisco's across uh, all of the APIs across Cisco uh, consistent uh, and consistently good. Uh, and if you're a Cisco API developer, uh, that's that's great news. We hope. So we learned a lot about APIs and API management. Um, some of the lessons learned uh, and and best practices include um, the considering the API as a product. Uh, so it's not the last thing you do. It's not tacked on in a later release. Uh, make sure you plan to have a well-supported uh, uh, API up front. Um, make sure that uh, it can be you know, properly maintained, uh, that you can get logs for it, that your uh, support organization uh, knows about it, knows how to work with it. Um, uh, you know, treat it as a real product. Um, make sure it's designed um, by API usability experts. Um, keep the API design simple. Um, consistent, um, keep it loosely coupled, right? So that uh, the API is not defined so precisely that, that uh, client applications break uh, when you uh, make a new release uh, or add an enhancement to it. Um, uh, and make sure there's an, an evolvability plan. Uh, so uh, mechanisms both within the design of the API uh, as well as communication paths uh, where you can make changes to the API uh, and keep developers informed and, and give them the info they need to to uh, keep, keep up with you uh, as new releases uh, evolve. Um, given that, backward compatibility uh, is key. Um, invest as much as you can uh, upfront uh, in building the best API you, you can because application developers will spend a lot of time and effort to, on your API uh, and build a solution and then move on. Uh, and they'll expect that API to keep working in its 1.0 version for you know forever, for a long time anyway. Uh, so keep that in mind. Um, make sure that there is a backward compatibility um, you know, plan published. Your developers know what it is uh, and that your engineering teams are respecting that uh, to, to the best that they can. Uh, de developer experience counts for a lot. Um, you can have a great API, um, but if no one can find it, uh, learn about it, uh, get support for it, uh, or hear about it, uh, then uh, it's all but useless. Um, make sure your developer experience is, is part of the planning, uh, it's adequately uh, staffed, uh, that developers can get support uh, not only during you know, business hours when they're writing the app, um, but on the weekend uh, as a mission critical SLA support when uh, API based solutions go to production and, and have issues. Security and privacy, uh, these are a must, uh, as always, um, for, for Cisco, for sure. Um, the good news uh, is that uh, recommendations directly from our application style guide are, are now part of uh, the, the checklist uh, and the enforced requirements for the Cisco product uh, development methodology um, uh, program. Uh, so all, all APIs going forward will have to meet requirements, uh, you know, consistent requirements, best practice uh, requirements from, from our style guide. I hope you enjoyed the session uh, and learned a little something. Uh, I know I did during the process. Be sure to check out the OpenAPI spec uh, and the automated tools uh, that it provides um, to see if uh, an API design first philosophy makes sense uh, for your development team. Uh, and go out there and build great, consistent APIs. Thanks. <laughs>